First, I'm going to provide you with a quick overview uh, of my postdoctoral research project, the postdoc in a nutshell, uh, for those who aren't familiar with it. And I'm going to include some of my research findings and outputs. Secondly, I'm going to show you an extract uh, of a research film, a documentary film I'm currently finishing editing at the moment. Uh, and it's really an experiment in, uh, in visual ethnography uh, to me. Um, so I'm really looking forward to your feedback afterwards. And finally, I'm going to talk a bit about research impact, uh, networking, and applied work. And hopefully, we'll still have some time for questions afterwards. So my uh, postdoctoral research project uh, was entitled Informal Creative Cities, and it aimed to connect uh, urban cultural policies uh, with uh, more of the informal grassroots uh, domain of uh, ordinary creative practices in Latin America. Uh, the project critically engaged with the notion of the creative city as a theoretical construct uh, and an urban development strategy that emerged pretty much in the global north and has travelled in different ways uh, to various locations in the global south. I was interested in examining the entanglement between this creative turn and neoliberal urbanism and questioned the reduction of the notion of the creative city to the city's creative economy narrowly conceived as the culture and the creative industries. So I was looking at uh, three key questions uh, that guided my, my research project, uh, and these are to do with how we can locate this concept of creative cities in Latin America, in which ways it's been imagined, contested, and appropriated uh, locally. Um, how do these concepts that originate elsewhere travel and become to be appropriated and contested uh, locally? And what alternative models of creativity uh, we can draw from these southern experiences, both at a policy and at a grassroots uh, level, to expand uh, normative hegemonic uh, views on, on urban creativity. So the aim of the project was really to try to connect the formal with the informal, try to really question uh, and find the connections uh, across these, uh, these spheres. And, um, I focus on a number of case studies in two cities, Rio de Janeiro and Buenos Aires. And uh, these studies included uh, arts factories, artist movements, and two uh, social circus organizations at the grassroots level. But I was also engaging with the policy uh, domain, uh, looking at creative and uh, creative economy and cultural offices at the different governmental levels of these two cities. Um, so I ended up compiling and producing a large amount of data, around 60 uh, in-depth interviews, 45 interviews, and then 15 which were uh, videoed uh, for my film. And I also undertook uh, policy analysis and compiled a large number of fieldwork notes, photographs, institutional materials. So this generated a large amount of empirical data that I'm still using, uh, even beyond the end, the formal end of my, of my fellowship that is informing my current uh, chapters and, and journal articles. So the research uh, sought to go beyond uh, elites' business-oriented creativity to uh, place it in, in between the formal and the informal, and linking urban creativity as well with contemporary issues that are affecting cities, uh, not only in the South, but elsewhere in the globe. Uh, mega events, gentrification, inequality, neoliberalism, privatization, social unrest and political resistance. Um, so what I found uh, is that uh, in these two cities that I was looking at, there's an emerging but rapidly uh, developing uh, creative city policy field. And what I see is that there's a repeated story of marketization of creativity and gentrification and, and commercially oriented uh, interventions. But at the same time, there's a number of indigenous policy forms that start to emerge, uh, some questioning uh, concepts of creativity, but others uh, really applying and basically copying and, and doing policy transfer uh, pretty uh, straight away. Um, and thirdly, uh, I found that there's a number of emerging categories of creativity uh, that are actually challenging some of these hegemonic views. And, um, these categories show that creativity is better understood at a different scale, perhaps at the, at the level of the neighborhood, at the region, not so much at the level of the city itself, uh, that is socially constructed and collectively produced. And these southern categories, I think, can be productive in formulating a counterpoint and a critique 
uh, to a market-driven creative cities paradigm. Sorry, I'm not, I know I'm going very fast, uh, but there's a lot to cover here. So just to give you a quick example, uh, this is from uh, Brazil's National Development Bank, uh, Director of Creative Economy. So creative economy has any type of content that has uh, the possibility to create copyright, and our definition basically came pretty much from the books on creative economy that we copied from London. It was like we kind of copied, we had an idea in mind, uh, Hawking's idea, and then we made a copy of the innovation stuff. Um, so there's no doubt how inspiring these, uh, what are seen as pioneering uh, models of, of uh, creative economy development from, uh, from the United Kingdom, how they are inspiring uh, this policy development uh, in the South. Uh, these are examples of some of the uh, alternative categories that I mentioned earlier. Unfortunately, I won't have time to go uh, into detail in much of them, but they refer to these innovative ways of thinking creativity in space um, in terms of uh, creative territories or thinking of everyday invention, solidarity creative economies, live economies, or popular creativity. <laughs> in short, what the research revealed is that the creative cities uh, paradigm in Latin America, particularly in the two cities I was looking at, has been received with great suspicion uh, by the cultural workers, fearing the subordination of the state's role uh, to market forces. At a policy level, we've seen that this sometimes was celebrated and other times this was questioned. Uh, but by engaging with local disputes on the ground, I was able to understand how the Latin, the Latin American creative city imagination is being configured. In the case of Buenos Aires, for instance, it cannot be understood detached from existing struggles over the nature of cultural policy and the distribution of public funding in the city. In the case of Rio de Janeiro, discussions over cultural infrastructure, international events, corruption, and inequality uh, seem to unsettle some of the increasing number of creative economy initiatives that are taking place currently in the city. So I think the popular forms of urban creativity and solidarity uh, creative economy start to emerge and perhaps suggest an alternative uh, to uh, an hegemonic political economy of creativity uh, made popular by these foreign um, experiences. So I'm going to just jump to um, some of the publications that I've uh, already completed and others are still in the process of uh, being published or being resubmitted or, or under review. Um, these are a range of uh, publications, including uh, journal articles, book chapters. I'm going to mention here a special uh, issue that I'm co-editing with colleagues uh, at UCL, um, Colin Marx and Michele Acuto, on transcending informal urbanism uh, that we aim to publish in urban studies. It's in the process of being resubmitted, some of the papers. Um, and I'm also uh, collaborating uh, for a publication, well, Andy's also involved, uh, about creative hubs uh, in question. This is a book. Uh, I'm going to be uh, writing and uh, completing my article about recovery industrial factories and the ways in which they can also provide workspaces for, for artists. Um, and uh, the, the most recent one is the first one. It's also a special uh, issue for a journal. And I'm contributing with a um, publication on creativity, informality, and cultural labor in Rio de Janeiro favelas. So a, a whole range of uh, different topics and, and journals. Um, moving now quickly to uh, some of my outputs and, and, and impact and applied work. Um, so apart from the publications already mentioned, I'm, go I'm gonna focus here mainly on the non-academic uh, collaborations that I've been, uh, I've been involved in during this, uh, the last three years. Um, so here we can see uh, in the middle picture, uh, it's me with a book consulting staff and we were in Latin America, we were in Buenos Aires, I was uh, curating um, uh, what is, was the World Cities Culture Forum Regional Symposium. Uh, to which we invited heads of culture from Latin, different Latin American cities to have a conversation and a discussion uh, about uh, cultural policies and creative economies in the South, now trying to reframe the discussion around uh, existing local concerns and regional concerns. And uh, my role there was really to curate the program and I attempted to, uh, to put an emphasis in, in the question of informality and, and precariousness of, of cultural labor. Uh, another example of uh, creative collaborations, uh, it's um, the AHRC-funded Creative Lab, 
I'm here with uh, some uh, activists, uh, artists, and academics from uh, Brazil and from the UK. And here we basically work together in developing uh, forms of uh, creative interventions in the city, uh, tackling urban mobility issues and, and social change and social inequality. So it was a really uh, interesting uh, kind of intervention in the city. And then, well, a number of others that probably I won't have time to, to cover now. Uh, I'm now a, um, an advisor to uh, the local UK Local Commission for UNESCO. Uh, to, so I provide academic uh, reviews and advice. Um, and I'm also a reviewer for the ESRC Peer Review College. Um, this is an example of uh, one of the, the, late, the, the last activities that I did as part of the fellowship. And this is with an award that I received from the British Academy uh, with the great help of uh, Andy Pratt, uh, who share many of his contacts. So uh, here what we did was to create an inter interdisciplinary and international platform to discuss uh, creative city developments, uh, bringing together different actors from policy, cultural policy development agencies from different uh, European cities, together with uh, some cultural producers and academics from the UK, but also uh, from Latin American and African contexts. Um, we partnered with the British Council, and we have among the different participants the GLA, the Get Foundation, Creative England. So it was a really interesting series of engagement events uh, that we put together at City uh, to discuss three main issues uh, in, within the, the broad field of creative city. We looked at precarity in cultural and creative labor. We looked at issues of cultural regeneration, but mainly with a focus on gentrification. And finally, creative activism and social change. As part of this uh, interdisciplinary discussion, um, we also organized an international panel looking at the question of how can we create more just and less unequal creative cities. And uh, yeah, and this was the, the event, uh, the main event that we had in which uh, we also have an academic discussion uh, with scholars from, from elsewhere not just the UK. Um, I probably need to show you the film now because I think I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to have time otherwise. So as I said, this is a, a visual experiment in uh, ethnographic filmmaking. Uh, basically, I, I, I'm doing it on my own um, with pretty basic skills into uh, the audiovisual world, editing, sound, and, and film. And this is an extract that I basically put together to show you in this event. Uh, the, the film is still ongoing and it's in progress. It's uh, half an hour long. I'm aiming to cut it in half. So this is only five minutes of the film.